Hello, hello. Welcome to the Mindful Mama Collective. We're so excited you're here and we're so excited to talk about goals today. Chelsea is the goal queen and we're going to bring it down <laughs> um, to, to parenting goals too. And how do you set a goal, you know, being realistic with, um, I mean, for Chelsea and I, we have young kids. So how do you what does that look like as well? So I'm Rebecca. I am a mom of three kids. I call myself a postpartum depression thriver. Um, and there's a previous video and there'll be some future stuff too as well, where you can look up my story. Um, but Chels, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll jump right in. Awesome. I am so excited to chat about this topic because goals are so important. And uh, yeah, I am Chels. I am a mom of two little boys. And I am so excited that you guys are all here to, to listen in, listen in to our topics and our future topics. And uh, yeah, just to be what we're going to be sharing is, is incredible. It's going to change some lives because what we've learned, it's changed our lives, which yeah. in turn <laughs> has got us to this point. So it's incredible being able to being able to be in this high vibration and living this life at, like, and being able to share it with you is, yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So before we get started, Chels, we are the Mindful Mama Collective. We have a Facebook group that Chels leads. We meet here every Tuesday at 11 on Clubhouse and you can find video content if you look up Mindful Mama Collective on YouTube. Are you ready to go, Chels? Of course. Let's okay. do this. How do I set a goal? And then when we kind of walk through that, if there's anybody in the room that wants us to kind of help them figure out what kind of a goal they want to set, or maybe something that's blocking them from setting a goal, we will take questions and maybe we'll have time to do a little bit of coaching as well before we close out the room. Yeah, for ready? sure. That would be awesome. Okie dokie. Chelsea, how do I set a goal? Okay, so the first I want to talk about the importance of a goal, because why do we need a goal, right? Like that we, we hear about this, but we don't actually know the reason on why we need a goal or why it's important in our life, regardless whether you are a mom raising kids, working from home, like building a business, whatever you're doing, you still need a goal. It is, it is a must, because when we don't know where we're going, we are constantly lost. So a goal sets us as like, okay, like if I'm going on a road trip, I would know exactly where I'm going to go. Let's say we're going to Florida. I know exactly where Florida is on a map, but do I know every road that I'm going to take to get there? No. And a goal is the exact same way. We don't need to know every little road on how we're going to get there because we're setting our goal for let's say six months, a year, maybe three years down the road or five years, but we're not setting a goal for the next 40, 50, 60, 70 years we're going to be on the planet, right? So we need to just set one that's going to be achievable and attainable for our current state of life because we know we're not going to have little kids forever. So things are going to look a lot different in the next five years when they're that much older, right? So so yeah, getting really clear on what it is that you want. So we've all always, and talked about this a bunch, is, is really building that desire list. I know for me, this was huge. It was able, like, I was able to then take all my thoughts of like, oh, I wish I could have this, or I wish I could have that now and actually put it on paper. How about you, Rebecca? Okay, but I'm going to push back for a second, Chelsea. I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? I am a busy mom in survival mode. I don't have time to set goals. If someone says that to you, what is your response? Because I know that was my first thing was like, okay, I'm just trying to get through the day today. I'm trying to make sure everybody's fed and feels loved by the end of the day. Like, I don't have time to think about my future. So yeah, I would like to say to that would be setting time aside for yourself because when we are always give give giving we don't put ourselves first and then in turn we don't even allow in the energy that's going to open up the ideas the thoughts of what we even want so being busy go 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 like 
that was me. I, before I was a mom, even when I was a mom, that was our life before having kids. So then as soon as it was time to have kids, our lifestyle really didn't change. I'm busy, go, go, go here, there, everywhere, had to be at everything. And it was exhausting. So being a mom that is kind of feeling drained and not really like knowing exactly what she wants is uh, setting a goal is even that much more important for you if that's how you're feeling. Yeah. And I think, I think when we think goal, we're thinking, oh, like, what do I want to do with my career? What do I want? Like, what do I want out of my life? And I think that we're, we're not, um, we're thinking too big and we're not getting specific for myself. When I set goals, I had a goal for um, the kind of kids I want to raise. I had a goal for how I wanted my home to feel. I had a goal for the kind of marriage that I wanted. And I have a goal for what I want to do when my kids someday move out because, you know, God willing, they're all going to make it to 18, 19, 20, and they're going to be gone. And then I've got another 20, 30, 40 years left, right? So I think that um, a goal for me in parenting was just that I wanted to raise or I want to raise kids that contribute to society. I want to raise kids that when they're 18, 19, 20, 21 can move out and be okay. And that's a huge part of how I then parent. But if we never take the time to sit back and go, what kind of a mom do I want to be? What do I want my kids to be like? Then we go into survival and then we go into reacting instead of responding. And it's a vicious cycle. And then we end up being where we don't want to be. And, and really all we had to do was take a few minutes, sit back and go, what kind of a mom do I want to be? Where do I want my kids to be in 10, 12, 18 years? Mm -hmm. It's so true because I feel we don't set a goal for the parents we want to be. We just have, we just have kids and then we figure it out, which is, is okay. And we're not saying there's anything wrong with that, but really being intentional on, on what kind of parent you want to be or, um, what kind of lifestyle you want to have with your kids now that they're a part of your a part of your life, it, I think is very, very important, In, including them into everything you do, but also not holding yourself back from the things that you want to do just because, oh, I have kids now, because mm -hmm. that's not that's not OK either, because now you're holding yourself back, which in turn may lead to regrets in the future or whatever. So trying to do what you can handle but also like pushing those boundaries a little bit right to get to kind of the edge of what what you're here to to do like mm -hmm. we're all here to grow and we have so much potential inside of us inside of us that we are not even like closely tapping into it is unreal the potential that we have once you actually start diving in and learning more about mm -hmm. that which is so cool and focus is so important, right? And so that's why I love, I think it's so important to set those goals. So right now, you know, I, I have goals for, you know, my career or what I want to do when my kids grow up, because I, from the minute they were born, I knew that someday they were going to move out. And so that is how I've built my life is right now, my focus, what I devote most of my time to is raising those responsible adults someday. But I also know that there are other things I want to do. And so for me, you know, I've got a podcast. And so one weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every three months, I go up to my co-host's apartment and we record for a couple of days. And that's how we've made that feasible. That's something that I want to do that doesn't take away from me being with my kids the way that I have set those goals. And then I can have both. Right. I can do the podcast and I can do it well and I can be that present mom, that homeschooling mom that I really want to be. But before I sat down and really went, OK, this is what I want in parenting. This is what I want in my career. This is what I want to do with, for a living. This is what I want to get paid to do. Before I was doing that, I was like trying to record a podcast episode here and then getting stressed because the babysitter canceled and then trying to do something with the kids. But I was on social media trying to, you know, like it's, it, I'm getting stressed just talking about it because I didn't have those goals in balance. And so that's been huge for me is just taking that time 
to sit and go, what do I really want? Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I feel you like just the stress of, okay, like, I think this is what I want to do. I want to grow a business. I want to be a mom. I want to do this. I want to do that. And like the list just keeps going, but it's focusing on in that moment. So not getting overwhelmed by all the things you want to do because sitting in overwhelm, you, you do nothing. You just like, Oh, okay. Shut off the, are we speaking from experience, Chelsea? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, totally. (laughs) Like when I would sit in overwhelm of like, okay, I know what I, I need to do, but it's, is getting there to do it and getting really focused on, on the tasks of what I need to do to get there. So, so breaking it way, way, way down into like the smallest, which sounds so silly breaking it into the smallest little chunk pieces but it gives you a grasp on okay this goal is attainable Mm -hmm. it looks huge but when you break it down to like oh I just have to contact a person today like it seems way easier Mm -hmm. in order to to grow something because we can allow the stress and everything to to kind of take over that and then we're not actually letting in that creative energy and opening up all of those doors that are meant and opportunities that are meant to come to us when we're, we just kind of close off to it because then it doesn't come in freely. Yeah, absolutely. So we have to sit and really get quiet and think about what we want. Like we've established why goals are important because they help us to parent with intention, to be with our partner with intention, to build a space, a home, or an energy that we want. They help us to continue in our careers and continue to grow as a person when we set those goals. And so it's really important that we do that. Living with intention gets rid of that overwhelm and that stress and that vicious cycle, right? So what does it look like to go to get ready to set a goal? So yeah, you, like Rebecca said, you want to get really, really quiet. We, we sometimes think again, this is a really silly piece because like, oh, I don't have time to sit down. I'm too busy. I've got kids to take care of or whatever, but it's find the time, find the time because your, your kids sleep before you go to sleep. I'm sure at, at least a half an hour earlier than you would go to sleep. I'm, I'm almost betting. Um, So find that time, take the time, maybe shut the TV off if that's kind of your nightly thing and get really, really quiet because our intuition is actually a very, very quiet voice. Our beliefs and our habits and our paradigms and all of that stuff is really, really loud. So when we're go, 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 that's all we hear. But when we actually sit in stillness and quiet, start visualizing how you see your life if if it's a type of lifestyle that you want to live or things that you want to have in your life getting really quiet and and just write a list even if it ends up being kind of like a journal entry just write it all down whatever comes to you write it down if it seems silly write it down because it won't be it will not be silly and there'll be a reason why that thought came to you so getting really yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Chels, interrupting okay. you. How rude of me. What I found when I was writing that list, and I've done this multiple times, but what I found was that um, the list had a theme, right? Like all the things that I want out of my life, whether that's something um, material, like the house, the dream house I want, um, how people view me, the relationships I have with people, they all came down to a feeling that I want to have. Um, and for other, for, um, other people, it's a dollar amount they need to make to get, and I have a dollar amount of what I need to make to get what I physically want. Um, but at first I'm like, well, there's just so many things all over the place that I want. How am I ever going to, but when I wrote down the list and looked at it, I'm like, okay, so this is my theme. What I want is to have a life that has order in it which then creates room for creativity. And so for me, that became my goal was to create a life of order. So all the other things like the house I want, the car that I want, um, 
the relationship that I want. When I create order in my schedule, then I create time for those, those intentional relationships that I want. When I create order in my home and it's tidy and all the craft supplies are where they're supposed to be, my kids can pull them out and make something beautiful. When I create order in, um, in my podcast, then I can see exactly how many guests I need and then I know what to promote, right? So that really ended up being my goal was to create or to have a life with order and everything else, all the other things on the list, they're going to come with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think for, obviously I can only speak for myself, but I feel a lot of people are in kind of the same boat. And as you, as you dive into your desire list and your goals that you write down, it's again, noticing that theme, because I felt the exact same way. It's just like, once things in my life. So my schedule, same as you, Rebecca started, I started time blocking. Now I'm time blocking. I know when I have free time to do whatever, hang out with the kids, spend intentional time with them. Then it was like, now I create space for these relationships. Now Craig and I have special time together or date nights or random days where, yeah, we get a babysitter to watch the kids and we go do our thing. We go and do something just us too. Cause as parents, that is so important. So yeah. I feel as like this overall goal, which I didn't even think it was a goal. Same as you is creating order because now my house is becoming more tidy as I'm realizing what's actually happening. And all of these other little goals that were a part of my bigger list are now becoming fulfilled and answered because of my goal of like, yeah, obviously the dream home and all the things are going to then come in time, but it's like doing the little things that I can do now in the current house that we're in are only going to set up a good habit and belief and all of that for when we are in the new home that we won't have these issues of like, toys there obviously our kids will be older, older as well but like toys everywhere and like disorganization in the kitchen which is the room we spend like the most time in mm -hmm. like that won't happen in our new house so it's like all of this stuff is being set up for a reason in order to get you almost to the level that you need to be at and the awareness when you reach your big goal which is like crazy <laughs> yeah and something we had in, in our notes that we wanted to talk about was it is absolutely okay for you not to have a clue how you were going to accomplish your goal. Um, and something that you and I both ask and, and the coach that we've worked with has asked us. So say, say my goal is that I want, let's work on my career goal. I want to have a successful podcast. So when I have an opportunity come up, I have to ask, would Rebecca with a successful podcast say yes to this? Or would Rebecca who has a great relationship with her kids say yes to this? So last week I did a terrible job of this. I did a terrible job. My, like, I want my kids to be first. Monday, I helped my sister take resumes all over town. Had the kids with a sitter. Tuesday, I babysat for somebody else. So my kids did not get my undivided attention and we didn't even get our homeschooling done. Wednesday, I again helped a sister and my kids were in the car for three hours. Thursday, you and I were working on stuff, which is a part of my long-term goal. So that one I felt good about. Friday, something came up and I ended up having to do somebody else's job. And I could have said no. I could have said no because it did not align with who I want. Only one of those five days did what I was doing align with who I want to be and where I want to go. And, and that feeling of exhaustion, that was my red flag for me. I'm like, why am I so tired? And I realized that it was because I wasn't living in alignment with where and who I actually want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. Like that's such a good way to notice you were not necessarily coming from you with your goal achieved. Like that is awesome that you got to be put in that situation to then realize, okay, this is not the way I would want to live mm -hmm. with my goal achieved. And I, and I feel we need to, to have these experiences to then know how we want the situation, because then we can start focusing on how we want it 
and not how we don't want it. Because if we mm-hmm. just keep asking for more of what we don't want, then we're just going to keep getting more of that. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so what I did this week, so I got away last weekend, it was a podcast weekend and I got some time to reflect and doing the podcast just makes me feel alive. I just absolutely love it. Um, And so it was a two hour drive each way. And I spent some time reflecting on the drive and going like, what do I, you know, I I took a break. What do I want? Like going over my goals again. and, And you know, what do I want this next week to look like? So Someone texted me last night and asked for help this morning. And so I said, yes, but I said, I homeschool till this time. I have something else at this time and then I'm available. So you don't always have to say no. Sometimes it's uh, okay. I need to do this first and then we can. And sometimes you say no to something that actually would be really kind to someone or sounds like a great opportunity but it doesn't get you where you need to go. And so you need to balance that putting others first and loving others absolutely with the, this is who I want to be and where I want to go. And so it's like last week, I learned the hard way how not to do it, but I took that lesson and I went, okay, what do I want it to look like? And I have set some boundaries this week that have helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And definitely releasing some like, beliefs that you might have around oh putting myself first is selfish or uh, my kids always have to come first before me I come last I think as a mom in particularly that was a huge learning for me and I'm sure you can chime in as well Rebecca but it's huge in order to realize it's not selfish to put yourself first as long as that is aligning with your family, mm-hmm. if it if it's not aligning with your family because you're going here, there, and everywhere and not spending the time that you want with your kids, then definitely you need to like rework your schedule there. So for me, I get up before my kids and do all of my work and all of my studying and everything I need to do to set myself up for the day. And then my kids wake up and then start... I start their routine, right? And then Mm -hmm. if it's a daycare day, they go off to daycare. I do some work. So then I'm filling up my cup again, helping other people, which then for me, serving is like right there up up there with me doing my own work because Mm -hmm. serving someone else, as long as I've done my work first, then I can fill my cup up and then use that to, to help someone else. Yeah. And I have this, so I'm a Christian. And so I I read the Bible. um, And there's this verse in there that says, you know, love others as yourself. And that verse has gotten twisted. And, you know, there are verses that say turn the other cheek and things like that. But the core verse where that comes from is love others as yourself. So if you are doing something for someone else, but you wouldn't do it for yourself, is it love? Right. And so it's, it's an interesting, I made that connection this year and I went, huh, right. That's just such an interesting. And so that is, that is something I ask myself too. Is this loving to this person and to myself? Um, Is that going to be good for both of us? And so that that's huge too. But I think what it comes down to when you're talking a goal is don't just sit down and write your goals down once and then leave it. I think it needs to be, if you want to live with intention, you have to remind yourself of where you want to go every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only way that your goal will in turn happen. Because if you're not putting it out to the universe, God, source, whoever it is, the higher power, if you're not putting it out there, then they have no idea that that's even something on your radar. They have no idea that is something that you want. And when it comes back to the law of attraction, which is one of seven laws of the universe, that is the law. You put out the cause or your want, let's say, and then in turn, it has to come back and it has to happen for you. But you have to put it out there and be very intentional when you do put it out there in order for it to come back and, and you achieve it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I, when I look at, um, I guess we should, we could go back and, and talk about how we ended up here. Chelsea and I both took a course called thinking into results. And when I look at, um, my list that I wrote at the beginning and the life that I've created now, eight months later, so many things that I had on that list, I have now. I am almost debt free. I have a greenhouse. I have a podcast. I have so many things. And so for a few weeks after I finished the course, I kind of felt myself like in a daze because I wasn't, I didn't have something to work towards. And so now I have a new set of goals that I want to get to. Um, and so that living intention in intention and reminding yourself that every day and making decisions from that, would the person that I want to be say yes to that? Would the person that I want to be say no to that? And having that be something you do every day, I think that's how you get ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important what you just said to Rebecca is the piece about you felt kind of lost when you're like, oh, I achieved everything. Like, and again, so getting right back to the drawing board, going back to your list of like, okay, I've achieved that goal. Now, which one? And it's kind of like, we use this analogy all the time of climbing a mountain. You mm -hmm. have to get, so I just want to take a step back and, and figure out why it is that we set goals. We don't set goals in order to get things in our life. Those are just kind of the end result of the goal, which then keeps us working towards it. But in order, the whole idea of, of having a goal is so that you grow. That is the whole idea of getting it. And I think a lot of people think that's what a goal is, is I get, I have a goal to get more, but it's not, that's not what it is at all. It is you're now growing because you know how to achieve that goal once you've gotten there. Mm -hmm. And then now you can, if I've achieved this, what can I achieve next? So in the idea of it being a mountain, you've climbed one mountain. And then from that mountaintop, now you see another mountain that's much taller, but you couldn't see it because you're at the bottom of that first mountain. So then again, you get to that next or that top of that mountain and then you see a bigger one. So then you just keep going and you can see the ripple effect of how you just keep impacting so many people in your life and so many people if, if it's globally, then you're going to be impacting people around the world, which is, mm -hmm. ah, it's incredible. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you are listening to the Mindful Mama Collective. And if you want to get that much energy and that passionate about growth, you need to reach out to Chels and, because this is her, this is her jam. This, this is what she loves doing is teaching you how to get places and achieve those goals and um so this is definitely something you need to connect with Chelsea on because this is what she is all about um we're going to close out the room in a couple of minutes um Chelsea is there anything else you want to say about goals um and and how or why I just want to say get really really clear on that list and then once you have that list then that's when the universe is is up to whatever it is that you're going to be open to and keep coming back to that list. Like Rebecca said, don't just write it out, tuck it away in a book and then put it away forever. No, no, no. That's not the point of the goal. So writing out the list, coming back to it, repeating your goal over and over again, even get it on a little card. Like I have mine in my phone, in a little pocket on my phone. I keep my goals in there and they're with me every day and I repeat them multiple, multiple times a day, visualize myself already being there. This is such good information. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, if you want to know more, please reach, reach out to Chelsea. She's got some great links in the episode descriptions or in her profile if you're with us on Clubhouse. We really are here to help you be the best mamas, best women you can be. So please join our Facebook group joy uh connect with either of us on social media and let's find a way to help you set those goals if you don't know what your goals might be book a call with chels and um yeah. maybe figure out how to set those goals because you are capable of so so much we yes. love you and we will be back next week tuesday at 11. do you want to share our topic for next week Rebecca? Oh, yes what is our topic for next week oh right i think it is uh what depression looks like on a day-to-day -day basis 
I think that was our topic. So I'll be talking about my journey um, with depression and what that's looked like because there's a, definitely a stereotype of, oh, I can't get out of bed or I cry a lot, especially when it comes to postpartum depression. And so we're going to give you a fly on the wall view of what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. Practically, what does that look like? Um, what does that look like in relationships um, as far as laundry goes? You know, So it's going to be a really, really great topic. We're hoping to get some people chatting about their experiences as well. And then the week after, Chelsea will be talking about um, some natural ways to ease depression, raise your vibration, and um, live well. Because I know I have depression, or I struggle with, or I fight depression. But I, I have to say, I have a pretty great life. Yes, you do. So grateful for this conversation. Thank you guys for joining us. And we will see you next week.